Okay, hello, good morning. I'm uh, Tom, and I'm an iOS developer. Who else here is also an iOS developer? <laughs> hey, okay, that's, uh, that's a good amount. Okay, but now the follow-up question, who is a Mac developer? <laughs> that's less, and who is a full-time, at least more than iOS, Mac developer? Okay, so not me. Uh, I think I counted only one. <laughs> All right, two, okay. But that's not a lot. So, and uh, I'm a bit disappointed by that because I am a Mac user. I like my Mac. Um, and I would like to keep on using it. So I would like to be a, a, a healthy ecosystem. Uh, have people develop Mac apps, uh, have Apple improve the Mac, uh, have more Mac users, uh, and now it's sort of the other way around. There's less and less Mac apps, less Mac users, Mac, or not, maybe not Mac users, but not the engagement. Um, so that's what this is about. Uh, if we could take all of your expertise and uh, turn those into Mac apps, then maybe uh, the Mac will get more uh, apps and more engagement. Uh, and that's exciting to me, so that's uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, so this is the basic ID, uh, have one app across three pl platforms, uh, iPhone, iPad, and uh, Mac now. Um, and this is uh, sort of a follow-on because it already, the iOS first started with uh, iPhone and then the iPad uh, was added to that. Um, and now what if we add another, another thing? Uh, and at, at Q42, uh, we uh, mostly develop iPhone apps, but we, uh, even now, uh, most of the time when we start a new app, we add implicitly the iPad app as well, uh, because it's just not that hard to do. Um, there's a lot of tooling and support for uh, adding an iPad app to your iPhone app. Uh, so it would be very cool if we could also do the same to get a Mac app. And what I want to do in this talk is talk a little bit about this, about the history of Marzipan, uh, some other approaches, uh, how does it work, and give you sort of an overview um, about what this is. Uh, also give a small demo of how you can get started with playing around with this yourself. Um, but to temper your expectations, it's not something you can use already. You can't ship apps uh, with this. Um, but still. So, a brief history of marzipan. Uh, as a side note, uh, I've been using the word marzipan a lot the last year or something. Uh, I just only a couple of weeks ago realized what it actually means. Because <laughs> it's an English word, and for the Dutch speakers it means marzipan, so like the candy uh, from Sinterklaas. And I just only recently uh, learned that. Even though and now that I look back on it, I saw a lot of people pre presenting about marzipan, and they all had this background of marzipan. <laughs> Didn't make the connection. Anyway, um, last year in December, uh, in uh, Bloomberg, Mark Gurman wrote an article uh, talking about Apple working on a way to combine iOS and uh, Mac apps into a single user experience. Uh, he said, software developers will be able to design a single application that works with a touchscreen or a mouse and trackpad, uh, according to people familiar with the matter. Uh, and that was also the source of the name Marzipan. It was the code name for a secret multi-year project. So this was a rumor or a leak or something, and a lot of people started talking about it. What does it mean? What, 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 what will we get? And uh, one of the articles that sums that up was uh, uh, John Gruber uh, in uh, Darren Fiable writing about marzipan. And um, he said, it doesn't make any sense. iOS has no concept of a uh, mouse cursor and only runs on touchscreen devices. And macOS has no support for touchscreen devices and requires a mouse and a, uh, and a keyboard. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, what this probably is, is Apple working on not com creating cross-platform apps, but creating cross-platform frameworks. Uh, that was uh, his idea. You have uh, iPhone apps you write in UIKit, 
Mac apps, you write in AppKit, and if you want, uh, for example, if you want a color on iPhone, you write UI color, and if you want a color on uh, Mac, you write NS color. And those are distinct for historical reasons. Uh, what's probably happening is Apple is merging those. That was the ID uh, uh, people thought that that was what it meant. Uh, a couple of months later, he wrote some more about this, saying, no, Apple's not working on uh, cross-platform apps. Instead, uh, they're working on a new UI library, which is not something for this year, not something for 2018, but for later, uh, there's a cross-platform UI library that uh, sounds like a declarative control API. Uh, and I was very excited by that because I don't really like UI kits with the imperative uh, code. I would like a declarative API, something new, uh, with data binding and stuff. So that was uh, uh, interesting, but not something for this year. So then came along WWDC, and Craig Federici came on stage, senior vice president of software engineering, and he said, no, we are not merging iOS and macOS. Uh, instead, we're working on um, bringing more apps to the Mac, and he uh, showed us a sneak peek. Um, so these four apps are new in macOS. They existed before on uh, iPad and on iOS, uh, but not on the Mac. Uh, uh, so, so these are now uh, new, and these are the iOS apps running on the Mac. So it's the, that was the sneak peek, the new technology, which was basically the marzipan rumor from uh, a couple of months before. Uh, Apple is now working on a technology to bring iPhone apps to the Mac uh, and, uh, but we can't use it yet. Next year, 2019, uh, developers can use it. So that was uh, WWC. Some other people have also been working on it, because this is not something new. We've heard this before, build once, run anywhere. Uh, the, I think the best comparison is Windows. Microsoft's working on uh, Windows 10 universal platform, and it runs on uh, Raspberry Pis, and it runs on phones, on tablets, on desktops, on your Xbox, on a HoloLens, on an 80-inch uh, touchscreen display. Um, it's yeah, and if you're writing code for that, you can write one app, one universal app that uh, just has to do if checks: Does this device have a screen? Is it a touchscreen? is the 3D holographic screen and write uh, code against that. So that's a big... Uh, uh, someone else working on the same problem. Uh, Google is also working on it. Uh, Google has Android, but Android isn't very popular on tablets. However, Google also has Chrome OS, and now you can run uh, the Android Play Store on Chrome OS and install Android apps on your Chrome tablet or uh, laptop. And another competitor, sort of, is uh, Electron. <laughs> you, uh, Slack is just an example of uh, an Electron app. Uh, you can uh, get a web app and package it in a, a little package, and then uh, you get an app that works across uh, multiple platforms um, and takes a lot of memory. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. I don't know why it needs to take two gigabytes of RAM to run a chat app. So that sort of leads to the question, build ones run anywhere, aren't those cross-platform cross apps always crap? And the answer is, most of the time, yes, but I don't know. So if we look at uh, uh, the apps uh, Apple has, sh has shipped, uh, this is uh, voice memos. What's really cool is that it now exists. Uh, it didn't exist before on even not on iPad and also not on the Mac, and now I launched it on my Mac, and suddenly I have a bunch of recordings. I have a talk I did on R.Swift in 2016 that just showed up. I recorded it on my iPhone 6 back then, I think, uh, and it just showed up. So that's really cool, but if you start using the app, if you click Edit, uh, the whole screen changes, which is really weird for a Mac app. Uh, all these buttons are gigantic. I tried to... Uh, uh, play pause it using the space bar because that's what I'm used to from Final Cut doesn't work. So it's really a bit not a very good app. Um, this is uh, the home app, and this really sort of looks like the iPad simulator running on a Mac. Uh, this isn't really 
it looks weird. And I was I was using this app not to try marzipan stuff, but just to uh, look at um, my Airport Express settings. And I wanted to move away the window because I wanted to look at what behind there. But it doesn't work. You can't move the window because this is a uh, UI kit form sheet, and you can't move those. But still, I have high hopes. I think it will get better. Um, for these reasons, uh, instead of starting from something big like UIKit and shrinking it, they're starting from UIKit originally developed for the uh, iPhone and just start adding stuff to it to make it better. And I think that's the right way around. Um, they're also not rushing it. For the developers is something for next year. And there have been rumors for a while about Apple working on creating a better uh, iPad apps by adding windowing so you can have like multiple pages, documents open at the same time in different windows, um, tiled on the iPad, but maybe on the Mac as overlapping windows. Uh, and most importantly, I think the incentives are aligned. I want a better API, a better development experience, and Apple makes all of its money on the iPhone, on UIKit. That's where the money comes from for Apple. So they have a lot of reasons to try and improve it. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. So let's have a global overview about how it works. Um, how it works currently, uh, because as I said, it's still under heavy development. Uh, this is from um, uh, the State of the Union, uh, explaining sort of the, the general way in which it works. Um, the lower level frameworks like core foundation, core location, all that stuff has been unified. Uh, those APIs had sort of diverted over time, but they've been all unified because they're basically the same between macOS and iOS. And now uh, macOS has a new way of creating user interfaces. It already had AppKit, also WebKit and, and uh, things like Metal for games, but now it also has UIKit, so you can build an app in UIKit that runs on your Mac. Uh, and what they're doing is adding all these extra features that are features on the Mac to UIKit on the Mac. So that you can now populate the, the window, uh, window bar on your Mac and uh, it properly, properly resizes when you uh, um, resize the window, things like that. So if you look at it uh, the way it currently works, um, and this is no guarantee that we'll that uh, these apps will work like this uh, a year from now in the next macOS version. But the way it currently works is uh, whenever you start an app, it starts up two processes. One is the uh, UIKit process, uh, and the other is uh, an AppKit wrapper around that UIKit process. So the thing with the lowest uh, processor ID is the UIKit uh, app, the original app that also runs on uh, iOS, on the iPhone. Uh, and the other app is a wrapper around it, and it, um, uh, yeah, and those apps together work together to create a single uh, experience for the end user. Uh, if we dig into that a little deeper, this is the wrapper app called uh, UIKit Host App, and the first thing it does when it starts up is it uh, copies the icon and the app name and uh, and the user defaults and all that stuff from the source uh, iOS app. And then it uh, presents a window uh, with a menu bar and a, a window uh, t a toolbar and a uh, layer for displaying content. And that is the content from the other process. And this uh, app also deals with all the event mapping from uh, mouse and trackpad events to uh, uh, human interface device events on the uh, iPhone. The other app running UIKit, or UIKit Core, um, on the Mac, uh, is the actual UIKit app, uh, the source app. And this has uh, a lot of UIKit things, because this is the UIKit app. And, uh, and that is uh, rendering the actual UI. And that has been extended with all, a lot of private classes for uh, doing things like adding to the menu bar. And uh, whenever you want to present an alert, uh, 
from your uh, iOS UI kit code, you say uh, present alert, and that forwards that alert to the other process to present it as a Mac style alert box. Uh, interestingly, this uh, UI kit on the Mac no longer has any of the deprecated APIs, like UI uh, Web View has been deprecated for a while now, doesn't exist uh, here. You can use uh, WK Web View, but not UI Web View. Let's see. Um, a lot of people, after the betas came out, have been uh, digging into this. How does it actually work? Uh, one of them was uh, Steve Rodden-Smith, and he and others realized that uh, UIKit iOS apps have been running on the Mac for a while now, for 10 years actually, uh, in the iOS simulator. Um, so uh, Xcode can build your app for ARM processors for running on uh, iOS devices, but also for the iPhone simulator, and that's running natively on the Mac. Uh, so what uh, Steve Rodden Smith did is create a tool to just change your simulator builds a bit uh, to, to, so that you can start them up on your Mac as a Mac app. Uh, and when he uh, published this, I got very excited and uh, immediately started trying to uh, get this to work on a lot of apps. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I work at Q42, where we uh, were a project agency and we built a lot of uh, apps for clients. So I have access to a lot of real-world apps. And I just started trying to get them to work using the Marzipan uh, Fi tool. So this is the first app I tried. Uh, Primephonic is an app for uh, streaming classical music, sort of like uh, Spotify, but specifically for classical music. And I thought, that's a real good app to get working on my Mac. I want to listen to classical music on my Mac. Uh, so after some trying, I got Swift to work, but then I got stuck. Um, it uses a Safari View Controller for um, uh, the login screen, uh, but most importantly, it uses an audio player, which is a closed source binary we get uh, from the people making that, um, and that doesn't run on the Mac, so I couldn't get this to work. Then I tried the next app, PostNL, is an app for uh, uh, tracking uh, packages here in the Netherlands. Um, could get the Swift to work, but also uses a bunch of uh, closed source third-party third libraries, uh, so those don't work on the Mac. So I tried the third app, Rijksmuseum, again uses uh, uh, Firebase for uh, something. Um, don't, <laughs> don't know why. But it has also has the compass, because uh, if you're in the Rijksmuseum, you can walk around with the iPhone app and it uh, guides you to uh, the correct um, artworks. Uh, but that doesn't work on the Mac. Uh, so then I realized I shouldn't uh, aim so high, not try to get a complete giant app to work the first time. And I uh, picked a small part of the Rijksmuseum app, which is the Art Viewer, which is uh, the Rijksmuseum app has uh, high res uh, images to which you can zoom in, and it uses tiled images for efficiently uh, downloading those. Uh, and I could get that to work, so that's a separate app. Uh, uses Swift, UI kit, and things like uh, core animation uh, uh, tiled layers. And this, I finally got to work. I, uh, uh, the only thing I have to do is get the code for that app, build it for the iOS simulator, run it through Mars Benefy, and I can start up the app. And here you see it in uh, debug mode, and everything works exactly the same as on iOS. You can resize the window, it, it starts downloading more and less tiles, uh, exactly as it uh, uh, was designed for the iPhone or in the iPad, uh, works the same on the Mac. So this, once I got this to work, I was really excited. And I started to work on a uh, final app. This is uh, the app Train. Uh, I built this uh, together with my brother, um, so it's not a Q42 app, but it's uh, my app. And what's nice about that is I know all the source code. I know everything there is in there, so it's a three-year-old source code, uh, code base. Um, but I knew that if there's something that isn't working, I can just rip it out. And, um, and that's why I started to get a real working app uh, that people use and start ripping out stuff. Um, the, f the biggest thing I had to rip out was the Realm database, because it doesn't work on the Mac. Um, uh, but also smaller things like uh, the, the uh, haptic uh, feedback generator, Intense, uh, 
uh, Safari view controllers, uh, MapKit, entitlements. Had to rip out a whole bunch of stuff, but finally it got that app to work. So this was... Um, uh, uh, really nice, because <laughs> this I, I, I want my own app to work. That's uh, more importantly than the others. Um, so, okay, let's uh, see if uh, we can do this ourselves. Um, I want to give a small demo of how you can, if you want to get started with this stuff, uh, um, get an app to work, but. Uh, this isn't something you can use to create shipping apps to end users. Um, I've just taken stuff from the internet, tried it myself, and the very first thing you have to do is disable system integrity protection on your Mac and uh, Apple mobile file integrity protection. <laughs> disable all the security so that now you can run malware on your app, on your Mac. Um, so this Mac, by the way, is not my own Mac. This is some old Mac from uh, Q42. <laughs> I didn't want to do that on my own Mac. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, it, it's not really that uh, dangerous, I guess, because this is the way Macs were before a couple of generations ago, before system integrity protection, all the thing, uh, those things were added, but still. Uh, the, but this is also the reason why you can't ship it to end users because they won't probably won't do that to run your app. So uh, let's. Uh, I now have to disable mirroring so that you can see what I'm doing. Or turn on mirroring. Yes. So let's first um, start by just looking at an app like Home. So this is the home app. You can right-click, which is nice. Uh, that feels like a real Mac app. And then you click settings to change uh, your settings. And then, yeah, this this won't work. But still, this is this is a, a, a Marzipan app, or an, uh, the official name for the for the framework or whatever for the thing is iOS Mac. Um, and so this now runs two processors, and we can uh, look at how those work by uh, debugging those, attaching a debugger. So let's see here. This is one of those. Is uh, I don't know if you can see this. This uh, UIKit host app with the home home uh, icon. So we can attach to that and pause it to inspect the user interface. So now we see. Uh, how this works. So this is the real user interface of the app, and this is just the the, the app kit part. So that's only the toolbar up there, and then in the middle is the the thing rendering uh, the view. So that is this scene view, I think. So let's just sub layers, and here we see this is the thing rendering everything. The CA la la uh, layer host, that's rendering the uh, UI kit part. And it has a transform applied to it of 0 0.77. So everything uh, you see here is, uh, oh, it's not working when it's debugged, paused. Everything you see here is shrunken down to 77% of the iOS uh, size, because on iOS you have these fat fingers for touch screens, but here we have a very precise uh, pointing device, so everything can be a little bit smaller can also include more stuff on the screen. So that's the difference between uh, macOS and iOS. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, host app, but we also have the uh, UIKit app attached to home. Where is home with nearly H? Uh, this is really fun. We can use reveal app um, if we load the reveal server. Uh, 
if you don't know Reveal, it's an app for uh, uh, inspecting view hierarchies of uh, UIKit apps. And now this is a UIKit app, so we can inspect its view hierarchy. So now we can look at just the UIKit part. So no longer has the header on top, the toolbar on top, but this is the UIKit uh, part. And here we see everything here is uh, uh, related to UIKit. So we have UI collection view controllers, UI table views. Um, this is the real UI kit, and this is a lot of uh, interesting. So now you can inspect how this works, what are the uh, ways uh, in which Apple uh, implemented this. An interesting example here is if I um, click here, now this uh, 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 text field is highlighted. Uh, but this is something that doesn't happen on iOS. On iOS, you don't have this ring around it. Uh, that's a macOS feature, so they added that to uh, UI kit on the Mac to show this ring. The reason it's green is because I configured my uh, uh, Mojave to uh, be green. Um, but yeah, so we see this border around it. And we can, uh, if we command refresh here, we can see the border, inspect what it is. So I think we should be able, yes. Selected it. So now here you see this is something that uh, is new to UIKit, an NS automatic focus ring as a sub-layer of uh, on view. Uh, so this is the way it's implemented, half uh, AppKit, half UIKit, and UIKit has a bunch of stuff added to it to be more Mac-like. Okay. Um, so what if we uh, want to build something like this ourselves? Uh, how do we go about that? Let's just do that. Create a new project, uh, uh, tapped iOS app. So this is iOS, not macOS. Uh, demo. So here we have a app with a couple of tabs. Uh, we can, uh, let's add a button. Make it uh, centered. So this is real, normal UI kit. Uh, and now, yes. Let's run it in the iPhone simulator. So this is uh, a normal uh, iPhone app, which should run. Yes, it does. Click a button and it shows uh, a pop-up. But now we have a build for the iPhone simulator on the Mac, and we can uh, transform that using uh, Marzipanify. So uh, this is the app, the location of the app, or the, uh, the resulting binary. If we uh, look that up, here it is. This is the, the uh, uh, iPhone simulator binary. Um, and we can say marzipanify that app. That uh, does all the work for changing the, the headers and, and things, uh, pointing to different frameworks and libraries and generating a bunch of entitlements. Uh, but we've disabled sig signal uh, system integrity protection, so it will just work. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work is if I now double click on it, it won't start. Uh, and this, you get a bunch. Uh, if you start playing around with this, so for some reason it won't start. Uh, so the way to work around that is to not double click on it, but use LLDB, because then that way you can see what the problem is. Uh, now we just type run, and now it says the uh, source of the problem is uh, it uses Swift. Uh, uh, and because this Swift isn't yet ABI stable, every app ships with its own Swift version, and this Swift version isn't meant for uh, iOS Mac. Uh, the workaround for that is to just add it to the whitelist. So there's a whitelist uh, in uh, system iOS support for all the uh, frameworks that can be loaded. And let's just add it to the whitelist, and now we can double click it, and we have a running Mac app.
This is very exciting, the first time it worked. <laughs> and I can resize it, it uses all the uh, constraints and stuff, and if I click here to uh, show the alert, it now shows a Mac style uh, alert. Um, yeah, the only thing that's uh, missing here is the tab bar at the bottom, because apparently UI tab bar controller on the Mac doesn't uh, uh, show, present a tab bar. Um, there's a way to get it to work, but I didn't want that anyway. I wanted to have it be here in the, in the toolbar. So um, let's just switch to the version, yes. Here's an example. So this is the same app, um, uh, but now with a bunch of Objective-C code, adding all the private, um, the private uh, 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 protocols and things for uh, adding a toolbar to the Mac, to the Mac app. So here, here's the code I wrote. Uh, uh, get a list of all the tab bar items. So this is how you had to write map before there was map in Swift. Uh, but create a segmented control and add it to the window title bar. So now if I uh, compile this uh, other app, I have to transform that again. Let's see, whoops. Uh, whoops. And now we have an app with a cool segmented control. And this is way better. Uh, so this is, um, this is where I'm at with the, with the experimentation uh, stuff. Uh, and this is where I hope to be a year from now. I have the Train app working on iPhone, iPad, and also an app shipping in the, in the Mac App Store. Um, so this is where we're at. Currently, it's not a, a supported thing. You can play around with it, uh, but it's definitely not ready for prime time with all the private frameworks and stuff. But it's also a lot of fun. So if you, if you like this stuff, just start playing around with it, uh, even though it's probably all different after uh, WWDC next year. Uh, it's still fun to do. Uh, you can look at the code here for the uh, example. Um, the future, I think, uh, in my opinion, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think uh, Marzipan will get better. Uh, Apple will just start adding more and more stuff to UIKit on the Mac to make it more Mac-like, uh, integrate better. I think it's the future of Mac OS apps. Uh, and let's see what uh, next year brings. So that was um, my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>